All right, now with all that said, let's go ahead and start jumping into some of these photographs. And what I found for a lot of the scenes, the camera selected almost identical exposures. In this case, um, they selected exposures within a third of a stop of each other. Here, the 7,000 on the left selected 180th, and the 70 on the right selected uh, 1 100th. Here's another scene where they selected identical exposures. Here's another scene where again they selected identical exposures. And so in a lot of these scenes, as you'd expect with two competing camera models with a lot of research that goes into their metering systems, for most scenes, most typical scenes, the cameras are going to select pretty close exposures. Now, the outliers, which you normally would expect to be you know, wacky lighting, either strange colors within the lighting or different extremes of lighting, is where you'd expect to see the exposure differences. But actually, the outlier that I found was in uh, landscape photographs, which is sort of counterintuitive to what you'd expect because the landscape is pretty typical. And it's really the landscapes are what, what I'm going to be focusing on because this is what a lot of people are complaining about with the D7000 overexposure. So in this photograph, you have the 7000th photo on the left. It selected a shutter of 1 400th. On the right is the 7D. It selected a shutter of 1 1000th. And so that corresponds to about a one and a third stop difference in exposure between these two photographs. And so the first question to ask is, well, which exposure is right? Now, exposure is a very big topic. And there's different ways to define what correct exposure is, and I'll, I'll talk about a couple of working definitions, for at least for the purpose of comparing this particular photograph. And you can see which of those working definitions applies to you, because the definition really needs a context. It really needs to know how you intend to manipulate the photograph to know what represents a good or optimal exposure for your purposes. One working definition, and probably a definition that most people would probably uh, correlate to uh, proper exposure, is that the camera reproduced the original scene's luminance in the final photograph. And for a scene that doesn't have excessive dynamic range, where the dynamic range doesn't exceed the capability of the sensor, that's sort of a fair working definition. And in this case, I know that the uh, dynamic range did not exceed the uh, sensor capabilities, because here we can see the histogram, and I'll go ahead and uh, focus in on that for the 7000. And like most histograms, you have the uh, shadows on the left, the highlights on the right. The amplitude of the spikes and where they fall represents how many pixels within the image fall within this light stop. And so when you have a, a narrow distribution of these spikes, which is what you have here, because you have a long area here where there's hardly any pixels, uh, this demonstrates a low contrast in the scene. One of the complaints a lot of users have is that when the D7000 is exposing this way, it makes the image appear washed out. And it definitely is a, uh, washed out here. And, and actually, both images are washed out uh, primarily due to the low contrast. Because with the low contrast, you have sort of a flat image, which doesn't have any pop to it and sort of looks like there's complete haze to it. And there's actually hardly any atmospheric haze, haze in this image, even though it appears that way. And it's mostly just a function of, of the low contrast within the scene. And so by measuring, if you're working a definition of correct exposure is to match the luminance, then uh, by that definition, the D7000 is actually overexposed in this case. The actual scene luminance, as far as I recollect, is actually somewhere between what you see on the 7000 and the 7D. By my measure, the 7D is actually underexposed this image by about a third to half of a stop. And the exposure on the 7000 is one and a third stop higher. So the 7000 has overexposed the scene by about a half of a stop, or maybe a little bit more than a half of a stop again, in relation to what the original scene luminance is. Now, another working definition, at least as far as extreme overexposure, is that the camera clipped or oversaturated one or more of the color channels. And by that measure, the D7000 did not overexpose this image. And so here I have the 7000 image in the uh, develop tab, and I have the uh, clipping indicator turned on, and there's no clipping uh, demonstrated. You would see clipping as uh, blinkies within the image. Now, sometimes Lightroom is a little too passive or actually too aggressive in its clipping indicator where there might actually be clipping within the image and it doesn't actually show it. And so to, to make sure that there was no clipping, I actually wrote my own program that can analyze raw files. And I'll go ahead and show you what the output of that program looks like. And I'll make a link available to it. It's an open source program that I made available for free on my site. So what you have here are the reports for both images with the uh, 7D image on the left and the 7000 image on the right. And I've highlighted the portion of the report that shows you how many pixels within the image are clipped, which means that they're oversaturated. And it shows you that on an individual channel basis, the red, green, and blue, and also the second green channel. And in both cases, particularly for the 7000, none of the pixels are clipped. The takeaway of all this is that for these images, particularly the D7000, 
it's not overexposed uh, from a, a raw file point of view. And so the significance of it not being exposed for raw file is that even if it has an elevated exposure, which in this case it does because the apparent luminance is higher than what the original scene is, as long as none of those channels are clipped, you have the full flexibility to manipulate this image within Lightroom to correct th that exposure, to bring that exposure down. And it's actually a better starting point to have an image that's, that has an elevated exposure than one that has a lower exposure. And the reason for that is the higher the exposure you have, the less noise you're going to have. And that's particularly important in the blue channels, which is susceptible to uh, noise in a lot of cases because the, the exposure for the blue channel typically lags the other channels. And I'll demonstrate that here by showing both images. Again, the 7,000 images on the left and the 70 images on the right. And this is about uh, a 400% magnification. And you can see on the left here, there's hardly any or absolutely no perceptible noise within the image. It's just a completely smooth gradation of blue. Whereas you see here on the right with the 70 image, you have, you have a decent amount of noise. You have this maze pattern. The takeaway from this is that with a higher exposure, uh, you're going to have a much cleaner starting image, particularly in the blue channel. And, and most of the difference that you see here is just a direct function of the exposure. Again, the 7000 uh, having an exposure about one and a third stops brighter than the 7D image. And so with that said, you know, having a higher exposed or a brighter exposed image to begin with as a raw file, it gives you a lot more flexibility and more manipulation you can do without introducing too much noise into the image. And definitely bringing the exposure down is always going to produce a better, a cleaner image than if you had started with a lower exposure and brought the exposure up. And I'll demonstrate that because in both of these images, I've done some post-processing. So here's the post-processing on the uh, D7000 image, and I've also done it on the 70 image. And so I tried to match basically the, the general appearance of the scene as far as the, the tone curve, the contrast, and the relative brightness. And you can see here they're pretty closely matched. And so for the 7000 image to get to this state, I really had to lower the exposure. For the 7D image, I had to bring up the exposure because it was slightly underexposed. And so when you compare the, the channels after that final post-processing, now the uh, 7D image, by the way, is on the left, uh, you can still see here that the there's a little bit more noise in the 7000 image than the original photograph based upon the, the curve manipulations and the color manipulations that I've done, but there's still a lot more noise within the 7D image, again, because you, you started with a lower exposure. Getting back to the question of what represents proper exposure, you, the reason why I start I preface that with, well, it depends on how you shoot and how you process is, well, for the 7000, the proper exposure for you, if you do a lot of post-processing, is what the 7000 is generating for these scenes. The 7000 is exposing to the very limit right edge of the histogram for the, the channel which has the maximum luminance. Now, what you normally have in most cameras, and let me go ahead and reset this exposure back on both of these images, back to the original. What you normally have is what you see on the uh, this 7D case where it's overly conservative where it doesn't want to clip a channel and it's almost acting as if it's colorblind to the individual color channels. So when you look at the histogram, you can see the, uh, the red and green which produces the yellow here and then you can see the blue which is the leading channel of course because the brightest area in this image is the sky. And so what the 7D has done and a lot of cameras do is they sort of interpolate this color data and back off from the blue channel even though the blue channel is pretty far away from clipping based upon the way they expect the, the gamma to be applied to this image. And so it's, it's, it's very conservative in the exposure and so from in my opinion, it's underexposed by about a half of a stop as to what I consider proper exposure from a luminance point of view. Whereas what the 7000 appears to be doing is looking at the color data within the metering system and allowing it to push an individual channel all the way up to the clipping point uh, without respect to the other channels as long as the other channels lag. And so there's a lot more intelligence, I think, being applied to 7000 and how it's metering. The question is whether or not that intelligence makes sense for a lot of photographers. And, you know, based upon a lot of people complaining about the overexposure, the answer maybe is no, that they don't want it to be exposed as brightly, maybe because either they don't want to have to process their RAWs very much and do exposure compensation, or more importantly, it's because they shoot JPEGs. Now, I'm not a JPEG shooter myself, but for this evaluation, I have to be sensitive to JPEG shooters, and a lot of times they're shooting JPEGs because they don't want to have to do any post-processing. Uh, they really want the camera to produce an image off the bat at the time they shoot the photograph where they can just take that image and, and send it off to an email to a friend without having to post-process it much. And that's sort of a reasonable ex expectation when you have this automatic metering mode. You expect the camera to, you know, within reason, within scenes where it's reasonable to expect it to produce the correct exposure that you don't really have to do much to the image afterward.
And so what I've done for some of your, your JPEG shooters is I've taken that original RAW file, which I've shot in the 7000, and I've created JPEGs from it. And I did that within the actual D7000. It has the feature within its retouch menu where you can take a raw file and produce JPEGs from it and apply different picture styles to each of the JPEGs that you can create. And so I've created multiple JPEGs here to see what the image would have looked like if you had originally shot this as a JPEG shooter. Because again, since you're doing it inside of the camera, it's using the same JPEG engine you would, the camera would use if you had shot this originally as a JPEG. And so what you have here is the neutral JPEG that the camera produced, which happens to actually match exactly the, the neutral rendition that Lightroom produced for that RAW. And then you have here uh, is the, uh, the landscape version of that, the landscape picture style. And you, you can see here that the, the landscape has a lot more contrast. It's a bit punchier. You know, the contrast is still relatively flat because the, none of these profiles are really going to increase the black point and adjust it. It's really only something you can do in the, with a RAW processor. But it's still generating a more pleasing, slightly more contrastier image. Now, the problem in generating that contrast to your image and the, and the tone curve it's applied is that it's actually uh, created clipping in the blue channel. So whereas the original raw data within the blue channel had no clipping or saturation, by applying this uh, landscape profile, it actually did produce clipping. And I can demonstrate that because I have the same JPEG open in uh, CS5 Photoshop. And I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do a selection box here. And I'll look at the blue channel. You can see here that the mean value or the average is 253 and the median is 255. And the median means that half the values are below the value, half the values are equal to or above that value. And so what that demonstrates here is that there's clipping because this is a JPEG. And so the clipping level for an 8-bit JPEG is 255. And so any luminance value or brightness value that reaches the max value that the file supports gets uh, reduced to 255. That's the definition of clipping. And any area within the sky here, you can see that almost all of it is clipped within the blue channel. If you look at the red and green channels, you can see here the red, the mean, the average is only 170, and the green, the average is 212. And so back to an objective definition as to whether or not the, the image is now overexposed, it is overexposed from a clipping point of view of what, for this individual channel. A JPEG shooter, if you didn't want to have to do anything, it really is overexposed because even with the contrast curve that's been applied to this image for the landscape, it's still sort of a higher luminance, flatter image than what you normally expect to see. Now, here's the Vivid as well. So the Vivid applies even contrast to your tone curve, and in this case, it produced even more clipping within the sky, even here, right here at the base of the mountain. The question is, well, what's your style of shooting and which of, this exp which of these exposures are correct? Well, again, if you're a JPEG shooter, and you never really intended to do much post-processing or any post-processing, the image you can really say objectively is overexposed. And, and for those cases, and I'll go ahead and show a uh, return back to the 7000 versus the 7D, for an out-of-camera image, you probably want something that is closer to what the, the 7D produced, probably a little bit lighter than this. So, and so if you're set up and shooting JPEG, the, the way you'd have to do this is to start dialing in some negative exposure compensation for these scenes, these bright scenes, these landscape scenes where the camera is pushing the blue channel, you're going to really have to pull in those that exposure. Let me see another case here. Here's a pretty severe case. Um, here's with the 7000s on the left again, 70s on the right. The difference here is actually one and two-thirds stops difference. And here, the flatness of the image and the contrast even more stands out with the elevated exposure of the 7000. Because, you know, 7000 is a really unappealing image here with this, this neutral uh, tone curve where the sky just looks clipped, and actually it's not clipped, but it just looks completely clipped and washed out you know, as a function of both the contrast and the elevated exposure. Whereas this, the 70 looks a lot better as far as an out-of-camera image, something you'd want to send out without having to do any modification for. So in this case, you definitely would want to dial in perhaps a, a one, at least a one-stop exposure compensation. I think if you, if you alternate between maybe a two-thirds of a stop to maybe a one-stop exposure compensation for most of your landscape scenes on the 7000, you, you'd be good to go. Of course, I'd recommend that you start shooting raw because it gives you the full flexibility to manipulate the image and produce a much better final output. But again, if you're set on producing JPEGs, uh, you can just dial in that uh, negative exposure compensation.